नमस्कार अशोक टुडे इज अ वेरी स्पेशल शो एज आई से फॉर ऑल माय शो टुडे इट बिकम स्पेशल एज वी आर जस्ट कमिंग आफ्टर सेलिब्रेटिंग एन इम्पोर्टेंट इंडियन अमेरिकन फेस्टिवल शुड आई से और आई शुड आई से ग्लोबल फेस्टिवल लेट्स ए फेस्टिवल ऑफ लाइट एंड दिस ईयर इन न्यूयॉर्क मेजर डेवलपमेंट इज अनाउंसमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक हॉलीडे ऑन दिस डे there is lot of politics related to festivals also fortunately or unfortunately you need to be heard in order to be counted and in that context how republican party especially in nasa county is uh, doing i have the pleasure of two candidates uh, for new york state assembly one very well a familiar well known face vibhuti uh, ja another also is going to be a familiar face now so i Take this opportunity, welcoming both of you. Namaste, Vibhuti ji and Kara. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Yeah. So, Thank Kara, um, before the show, Vibhuti ji was mentioning uh, something about uh, the passion with which uh, you want to serve your uh, potential um, uh, constituency, that is New York uh, State Assembly uh, 16. And Vibhuti ji yeah. is con- oh, you. He's from. Uh, uh, mine is 16. Mine is. You are from. Kara is. Kara is from. I'm 22. 22. I'm 22. 22. Which is Valley Stream, Elmont, Franklin Square, Floral Park, Stewart Manor, and North Woodmere over here in Long Island. Okay, so let let me begin uh, first with Kara and Vibhuti with your permission, of course. Ladies first, as we say. Um, politics is not a road of roses. What makes you uh, put yourself out there uh, and face? Uh, all that which always is not a very um uh, pleasing noise uh, or music <laughs> uh it's it is very difficult you're correct the campaigning is not easy uh, i just keep reminding myself that uh, i'm doing this for people that i care about people that i love for my friends and my family that live in that live here in new york state which is i think under a lot of duress right now under current democrat leadership for many different reasons one um new york state has become new york state has become very much less safe place to live with a lot of the criminal justice uh, reforms that the democrats have put into place like cashless bail and giving judges no discretion uh also cost of living but besides that i'm running for assembly and there's a lot of very uh dangerous very um disturbing bills that are being proposed by democrats to become law in new york state that i'm very concerned about so i want to go to albany to fight these bills and if You like I could talk about two specific, very specific bills. So let One me, is, yeah. Let me come back to you on that, and let let's hear from Vibhuti ji also about. Uh, he is also not a professional politician, and uh, there is some inner calling which makes him take uh, so um, much uh, passionate interest in contesting for New York State Assembly seat. Uh, what what she was mentioning about some bills which. Uh, she's concern about uh, what are your concern and uh, you share her ideas uh... yes i do i do thank you very much for having the two of us here it is remarkably important that uh, we are non professional politicians stepping into the very challenging role in which in new york state the democratic party controls is virtually a single party rule here and it's unfortunate that people have fallen into the trap of the divisive politics of uh, the democrat party and pandering to the various vote banks offering things for free showing compassion where none exists because they divide and rule they have perfected the art of divide and rule they keep creating divisiveness amongst community in the name of unity so the question here is why are we in the race why am i in the race you have known me for a very long time and my stepping into the race has been for two reasons one is i have found that our community indian community has been viciously taken for granted by the democratic party they take it for granted that they have nowhere to go in a blue state they will vote blue but the reality is that we need to become cautious and aware that not all is happening in new york state is to the benefit of various residents here so i am the voice of the minority i am opting to be the voice of the minority because we if if a if a largely successful community like ours can be attacked by vicious groups who is spared 
And that's what my Kara and myself are stepping into the whole process. Well, I have the um, advantage of having both of you with us together. So I'll seek Kara's input on the point made by Vibhuti ji regarding uh, divisive politics. Mm -hmm. On what basis and uh, do you agree, number one? And what is it that you are going to do differently or collectively your party uh, to bring about a sense of unity and do away with this if it is the way you look at it? And again, he says his voice is going to be the voice of minority. Do you think there is a need uh, for minorities to identify themselves as a group to which they belong and uh, uh, seek uh, attention for their rights separately? Well, I, yes, uh, I was a former Democrat, now I'm a Republican. I realized uh, as a, also a, min a minority female that the Democrat party pandered to me for many years and they made promises that they don't keep and they continue to divide us. And, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of hate right now in the Democrat party that, which is why I moved away from the Democrat party. And I encourage people in New York to consider doing the same. The Democrat party has changed in many ways. Um, it's not the same Democrat party that people remember from a long time ago. It's been a very, it's become very, um, it's moved very far to the left. And a lot of people don't realize that. And we could get into that. But um, I would encourage anybody watching, because I do understand that New York is has a lot of Democrat voters, please consider voting for Republicans, that uh, the, the news media has given us a bad reputation. But all we want to do is fight for families, to fight for taxpayers, to fight for community safety, to fight for what's right, to fight for religious freedom, and all of these things that the Democrats, I feel, are against. So. Um, um, myself, I'm a former uh, boxer. I was a champion boxer and I'm now a journalist. So I spent a lot of time, um, you know, uh, in the media and I see just how dangerous the media has become when it comes to uh, dividing us and making us fight with each other and think that we're each other's enemy. When in reality, the government is uh, writing all these bills and making all these laws and we're not paying attention. So I would encourage people to start paying attention, especially to the laws that are written in your state, because they're the laws that are going to affect you the most. So now I, I'll come to you uh, for the reference which you made about certain bills which you are concerned about. But before that, um, it's interesting to see that you have been a fighter as a boxer also. And journalists also sometimes are considered uh, that they need to have a little bit of fighting uh, sort of a spirit uh, to uh, pursue the truth. But here I am reminded the Vibhutiji of another uh, uh, important leader from Democratic Party who recently expressed her uh, um, dissatisfaction and disgruntlement. And uh, Tulsi Gabbard, I'm referring to, the uh, former presidential candidate also from Democratic Party. And what, what are the points that she has made and how do you interpret her uh, decision of uh, disassociating herself with Democratic Party, uh, referring to it as a, a sort of elitist cabal. I agree. And I was I knew that it was only a matter of time before she switched over to Republican because her values and who she is does not align with the current Democrat Party. And everything she said was very, very spot on. She said that the Democrat Party is the party of, div of dividers and they are they want to divide us. And, and uh, she said that there's nothing in the Democrat party that she agrees with anymore. And I think that a lot of Americans feel that way. A lot of Democrats are frustrated. A lot of us are told when we're young, if we're minorities, that we're supposed to be Democrats. And that's not true. And that's very false. So I'm very glad that someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who has such a high profile and who is also a minority female, would go uh, and make that announcement. It's very, very great because I think that a lot of people will take her uh, take her advice and consider voting Republican and consider possibly leaving the Democrat Party as well. Yeah, we will do the same thing uh, to you. Uh, and allow me to add: Is it an individual's uh, decision? And she was quite vocal about steps taken by America under President Biden with respect to Russia and Ukraine and she kind of through her tweets was giving uh, suggestive ideas that uh, america is working towards pushing russia to take the step this is uh, what my impression is what are the other reasons that you see and what are the uh, possible implications of uh, her decision 
Thank you. Uh, you know, Kara said it very well that uh, if a person like Tulsi Gabbard, who was a Democrat, was a presidential candidate, and I backed her when she was running for the presidential election, the issue is very clear. This is something like an internal evaluation, self-reflection that Tulsi Gabbard did. And that's, that ought to be a learning point for Democratic Party instead of they began to attack her. It was terrible and very sad that when you are not willing to listen to a constructive feedback, it's not even a criticism, it's a feedback that we have drifted away. And she lamented the fact that Democratic Party had moved away from their essential principles. So the question here is, is Democratic Party willing to learn? Or are they going to indulge in a constant attack? You know, that's not fair. That's not correct. And that's exactly the point which we need to con consider ourselves. And, you know, th th this is very important. Two things are very critical. Media, just yesterday, Gallup poll came up with the report and their finding that 54% of the Americans feel that the failure of mainstream media, it will be the cause of deleterious impact on American democracy. That's one. And number two is the fact that, you know, you, you are doing nothing to stop the war. Tulsi Gabbard was also a soldier. She was in the armed forces. She served term in Afghanistan. She did tours for there. And she's still in the part of the National Guard, goes on on those things. So her opinion can't be just shrugged off. And that's very important. We have to figure out, as Kara very succinctly put three, four points that, you know, Democrat run states, cities are in a big mess. And one of the reasons that I'm contesting for this is that we live in Long Island. We don't want Long Island to resemble anything like New York City of today is, what Los, Los Angeles has become, what San Francisco has become, and, uh, you know, what Chicago is. They keep complaining in New York State, particularly, Ashokji. Democratic Party can't blame Republicans for the mess that the state is in. They have run the budget to $260 billion, and they do not know what to do with the money. They keep offering free things. Eventually, we all pay, pay for it. So the question is, whenever somebody offers you something for free, beware of the Ides of March, as the saying goes, because nothing is free. And Democratic Party plays that game because they they try to they try to pander to various vote banks, and that's what results in making commitments and promises that you can't keep. So and that's what is important here. You can't keep, and that's the reason why the budget surpluses are crazy. And uh, you know that's where the where the money goes. Nobody knows. We are in Long Island. We are the highest. Editorial candidate Lee Zeldin was attacked in upstate New York physically, and uh, people noticed that he got the, he grabbed the hand wrist of the attacker. Many people thought it was a very soft way, but he was a soldier. He knew exactly what to do to disable his right hand. His home was near his home. There was firing happening, violence happening. If people are not in a situation to address the issues. And I, there is one, I'll take a minute. My wife's car, BMW X5, was stolen from our house just 10 days ago. And the only reason we were able to find, we are, we are a part of a crime data. But the point which I'm trying to mention to you is that through GPS technology, we were able to locate the car immediately. It was parked at Newark Port area. We Police came and I they contacted Newark PD and they took position of the car. And when we asked him, why don't you do the fingerprint to find the culprits or people doing this? They said, there is no point. There is no point because those people will be out of bail even before we put the charge on them. See the risk, see the damage. If it can happen in Long Island, guess what? It can happen anywhere. Today, people in Long Island are concerned that when our home invasion is going to happen now, so I'm sorry, to, uh, I'm sorry to hear about uh, this ordeal that you have been through. And Kara, uh, uh, we heard about uh, many series of burglaries, ha burglaries happening in Nasa County, and uh, they have uh, nabbed a group of three illegal 
uh, immigrants who entered via probably Texas and came to uh, Nassau County. Uh, good thing is they uh, they've caught them, but we don't know how many such groups are operating. But let let me uh, request you to look at it in a broad way. Um, there is national politics and state politics and the constituency that you are going to represent. So when you interacted during your campaign uh, with your potential voters, what do you think are their prime concerns? Are they concerns about concern about law and order, more about economy, or some local issues related to education and uh, yeah. probably yeah, recreation or whatever? Yeah. Well, I have a lot of Southeast Asian in my community, um, a lot of m multiple different ethnicities, religions. And one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about are, are bills that are being written to affect education in schools. So there's a bill AA16 that's very much supported by Democrats in the in the New York State Assembly, has a lot of co-signers on it and will get passed if we don't fight it, which is that to teach kids about sex education, gender fluidity, and a lot of things that there a lot of many people feel is inappropriate to start learning about in kindergarten. So the bill will, is a, to require sex education in kindergarten uh, to 12th grade, which will basically be run by the state and start teaching children very small when they're very formative about things like multiple genders, sex, and just things that are completely inappropriate for children to be learning about when they don't even know how to read and write or add two plus two, and they're learning that there's more than two genders. So many minority communities and many religious communities are very concerned about this. They feel that this is something that should be learned at home by the parents, uh, not by teachers in school, that teachers in school should be teaching kids math, writing, people look at that bill this bill says that minors could consent to their own medical procedures without their parental consent again a democrat bill written by a democrat that will be backed by democrats if uh, they remain in power so this is something that I want to go up there and fight because this bill is saying that minors, and it doesn't even specify an age, can get any type of medical procedure. There's no limitation without that parental consent. That would include puberty blockers, uh, gender changing hormones, uh, sex change, vaccinations, um, medications like psychiatric drugs that could become dead, dangerous and deadly. So these are all things that the state wants to give minors the ability to consent to without their parents' consent, which I believe is illegal. And uh, it go, the bill is so evil that it goes so far to say that it will actually tamper with the minor's medical bill. I'm, I'm sorry, it will tamper with the, the minor's medical record so that the parent is not aware that their child is getting any type of procedure. So it wants to hide it from the parents. So the state is after your children. And that's the message I'm trying to get across that a lot of people aren't paying attention to things like these, then bills like these are gonna get passed and your child's gonna be able to do things that you don't want them to and you're gonna have no say. So again, these are Democrat bills. It's part of a Democrat agenda. Republicans are against these bills. We will fight these bills. And uh, it's something that we do not want. So that's why I'm encouraging people to really look into the bills that are getting passed by the Democrats in New York State and what they're proposing and see which side of the coin you fall on. Do you agree more with Democrats or Republicans? Again, the parties have changed tremendously. So I think uh, the bill that you refer to and a little bit of details which we have shared with our viewers is uh, definitely a cause of concern for many people and anybody who thinks uh, uh, and uh, respect family values and uh, the basic approach uh, towards the overall growth of a child would find it uh, very, very uh, disturbing. Uh, the kind of uh, uh, authority which is being wielded in the name of uh, this bill. Uh, I, I don't know, there are more issues where uh, Republicans and Democrats see differently. And we'll continue our con conversation and we'll learn more about what you are offering uh, to your uh, constituents. Um, we'll continue this conversation right after this short break. Or what is uh, going on? It is not, to, to let's not abuse the word liberal. Liberal, there's nothing wrong in being a liberal, but extremism of a kind that Democratic Party is indulging in, that's what is hurting the process. 
And that's what New Yorkers must be concerned about. Because what is happening right now is that they have such super majority in the government, governor, senate, and assembly, that they believe that they can do whatever they want. And people have no choice. And that's totally antithetic to the democratic principle, that you need a choice. And you need to be consciously aware of that part. So Kara so beautifully stated the two bills which ought to affect every single family in America, in New York. And, uh, you know, it ought to concern every segment of the immigrant community, particularly the Asia side that we come from. Our values are not that. And the liberalism or extremism of the kind that Democratic Party is showing is what Tulsi Gabbard referred to. Is that what is what in heaven says this is going on here? Now, earlier you had also mentioned that, you know, we talked about the crime part of it. The cashless bail system, which Governor Lee is fighting so hard for it, and all the entire Republican Party is fighting hard for it, that the judges must have the discretion to decide who remains inside and who remains out. Today, we have enough number of stories and data given by police themselves that people are apprehended for the robbery, theft, and everything else. They have rap sheets on them, 40, 40 cases, 50 cases, and they are out in the open again. So what is actually happening is that people who are law abiding, who are civil people, who want to live their life the way it ought to be, are forced into a criminal support system. So the Democratic up. Party is ending up, ending up looking after the rights of the criminals rather than the rights of those who are abiding by the democratic rules and principles. This is, you know, very critical. I just want to allude one thing. It is always true that politics is local, but we must not forget that in this era of tectonic shift brought by technology, we are interconnected remarkably because today our gas prices are high, inflation is rampant, fuel prices, heating prices. I used to pay $2 for that. Today, it is $5.69 contract that I wrote for max ceiling price. Think about it. Prices of everything is going up. And now what is happening is, just one second, just one second. What is happening is that shopkeepers and businesses are arbitrarily scamming, spamming people now. You know, I was in a, in a lottery ticket. I was buying a lottery ticket and... The guy was buying a lighter and the guy, lighter cost $2.50. So the guy says, how come it was $1.99 and $2.50? He said, that's what the boss says. So everybody is exploiting. So we will, you know, I have to uh, sort of uh, apologize, seek apology to interrupt. We just have a few minutes to go. I would also want to hear Karen. I, I, I think the point that you made and you are also saying that we are interconnected. So there are a few things which barring whether it is Republican or Democrats, the way the world is the world economy is moving. I don't know whether inflation could be checked if we have Republicans in power at this point of time. But those are major issues. Coming back to local, though, as you mentioned, everything is interrelated. Yet local issues affect Kara people more while probably they decide who should represent them in the New York State Assembly. Uh, for example, in your District 22, what do you think is the prime concern or what is it that you are offering uh, to your constituents? The prime concern for me, for my district is safety. And it's also these bills that are being passed uh, when people are paying attention, they're list the people are paying attention more now to the state government. I think after COVID, we realized how much power the state government has, um, especially when it comes to the quality of life that we have and what we see on a daily basis here every day. So, you know, the, the state government affects what's being taught to your children in the school. The state, the state board could affect and write bills that actually give your children permission to get medical procedures without your consent. They could mandate vaccinations, things like this that a lot of people don't agree with. So I would ask anybody that lives in my district or that lives in any of the districts really in New York State to please consider voting Republican. Um, many people that were former Democrats like me and like a lot of the other Republicans that are running and also Tulsi Gabbard, for example, are frustrated with the leadership in the Democrat Party and feel that one power rule has really destroyed this country in so many ways and that we need to be restored to a balance of power where both Republicans 
and Democrats are governing together and they're balancing each other out. And uh, vote, please vote, I would say, consider vote Republican this year because we really need to get new leadership at Albany, people like Lee Zeldin. Um, we need to get some Republicans in Congress, again, to balance out Congress on a national level. And importantly, yeah. on a state level, to get people like me and Mr. Ja in office so that we can fight these crazy Democrat bills that are gonna really affect your children's minds. I think that's the most important takeaway here, that there's assembly bills that we could actually fight, that only 100 votes, 200 votes could turn an election. These are local elections where your vote counts. Two, 300 votes could actually put me in office. So please go out and vote and understand actually, that- So I, I take it from count. you that it is encouraging for us to learn about the issues that are going to change the way we live, uh, the way uh, our kids grow and what they learn based on who you cast your vote for. Uh, it's from the point of view of ITV Gold and this show, I not only thank Republican uh, candidates, I also thank Democrats uh, in the sense that they make us aware to think about the issues that are going to determine the kind of life that we will lead. So we need to pay attention to what are the issues being discussed in politics. At the same time, we should um, definitely go out and vote. Um, the concluding one minute remarks from uh, Vibhuti ji uh, regarding uh, your thoughts at this point. I want to do, first of all, thank you very much for giving us the platform today to both of us to speak and share the thoughts where we stand with reference to people's issues. And the local part of it is very important because law and order, safety and security are key. Where our tax dollars are going is, is very, very important. We cannot, and the, the democracy is about checks and balances. Right now, Democratic Party and the people of New York must know, must be aware, must become aware of that they have given a carte blanche to Democratic Party to do whatever they like, and they are doing whatever they like. So it is time for people to retain and regain the power, to put people in places who are responsible. You cannot take the voters for granted locally and state-wise, and it is important for people to know that at the moment, they have virtually surrendered their political rights to one party. Don't do that. We will be on that note. Um, we need to respect democracy by being aware of our role and responsibility as uh, a voter who uh, thinks about his interests and about which party, which candidate is going to help him realize his objectives. And, in that uh, context, I think what we heard from uh, Vibhuti Jhaji, who is a uh, candidate for New York State Assembly District 16, Nasa County, uh, a former banker, as well as a popular TV host, and Kara Castanova uh, contesting for New York uh, State Assembly seat uh, District 22. Uh, she has been a former boxer, and uh, what were the other journalists? Journalists yeah, also. Yeah. yeah. So, so here are people who have uh, very uh, valuable wealth of experience uh, with them, and uh, they want to help out. That's why they are there. And I hope people have heard you. And uh, I won't say that all of them would think in favor of uh, you reaching to represent them. But there will be quite a few who at least would agree with some of the points um, made by Kara and you, and um, they will consider it as their responsibility to play the role as uh, a voter who is aware of uh, what is at stake in the upcoming elections on the date. November 8th. Yeah. So that is very important to remember. No. And there's early voting. If you could take advantage of that as well, early voting the week before over here in uh, my district in Elmont and Valley Stream area, it's at the Elmont Public Library for most people, but find out where your early voting place is. Because if you're working on November 8th, you could vote the week before election day. Just look that up in the Board of Elections. And it's Wonderful. important that you get out there with your friends and family and vote. So on, on that note from Kara and on that note uh, from uh, Vibhuti ji, Time to say goodbye from today's Insight Tonight. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.